Hello, this is Pastor Jim Ponko with the late midweek meditation for May 27th, 2021. I don't know about you, but I was raised to address people respectfully. When I was a child, I was, I was taught to spoke to old people older than me or with authority, showing respect. It was always Mr. Smith or Mrs. Jones or Ms. Johnson. In fact, I have to admit that there are times when someone who is older than me, although there aren't many of them around anymore, or who has more authority than me, um, if they come up to me and say, oh no, call me Jack, I, I feel real uncomfortable by ad about addressing somebody who uh, has authority or, or, or who is older than me with, with, with their first name. It, it just doesn't seem to show respect. The Jewish people uh, have had that same sort of principle about God. In fact, they have always been so concerned about the possibility that they would use God's name in a disrespectful way that they don't say it at all. Uh, by that I mean that special name for God in the Old Testament. You know, if you read your Old Testament, there are times when God is referred to in all capital letters, Lord, L-O-R-D, in all caps. And they won't say that name out of respect, out of respect for God and his name. And that comes out of something that the Jewish people came to understand about God. They knew how he described himself in the book of Exodus. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of their fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. They understood that God was serious about his name and about how we treat it. In fact, they understood that God was serious about a lot of things because the Old Testament was filled with rules and regulations and prohibitions and warnings of what would happen if you didn't take God's word and God's name seriously. Perhaps we ought to be a little bit more sensitive about this issue. Perhaps we need to be more concerned about showing respect to God and being careful about the way that we use his name. After all, God said, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Think through your life. Is it possible that you are guilty of calling on God's name to curse and condemn other people more often than you call on God's name to praise and worship him? Now, some people might say, well, swear words, that's just a little thing when we curse and swear unnecessarily. But the fact is that if you pile a bunch of little stones one after another after another on top of each other, sooner or later, the wall you will build is just as tall and just as impenetrable as the wall built with big sins. That's why I want to share with you today the words of Paul written in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. This is what he writes. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. Because Jesus carried out his Father's will and became our brother and obeyed his Father's plan perfectly and suffered and died in our place, we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that spirit has taught us that we no longer need to be afraid of the way that we have abused God's name in the past. All of those sins have been forgiven by Christ. Instead, Paul says we have a spirit of sonship. In other words, God's name is now our family name. We can add to the end of our name God's son or God's daughter. But you know what that means? It means that we don't want to drag our family name through the mud. Jesus Christ is our brother. God is our creator and father. So we will use their names with reverence and, and gratitude. 
But notice something else. Did you, did you see it in there? Did you hear it? That, that Paul tells us that we have a new name that we can use for God. Abba. Abba Father. Now, you might know, not know a lot about that name, Abba, and you might not know exactly what it means. Technically, the word Abba was the Aramaic word for Father. But it had a deeper meaning than that. That word is only used three times in the New Testament. And two of those times it is used by the Apostle Paul, as he does here, reminding us that we have a spirit of sonship. So we can call God Abba, Father. But there's one more time it's used. Do you know when that is? It's in the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember? Jesus is praying. He is filled with agony because he is looking ahead to his suffering and his arrest, his beatings and, and his crucifixion. He's looking ahead to having to carry the guilt of the world on his so shoulders and he wants to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with his heavenly Father. So do you know what he prays? He prays, Abba, Father, everything is possible for, me, for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Do you see what Jesus is doing here? Abba is the personal name that Jesus has for his Father in heaven. It's the name he uses when he wants to remind his Father of the close, loving relationship that they have with each other. A relationship that means Jesus, Abba, Father, will listen to his prayer and take his needs seriously. But what Paul is telling us is that because Jesus became our brother and lived and died for us, we now have that same kind of relationship with our Father in heaven. He is not just heavenly Father, maker of heaven and earth and ruler of all things. No, he's also Abba Father. We can approach him with freedom, confidence, and joy, knowing that he is our dear Father who will hear us and answer our prayers. And what an amazing gift of God's grace that is. Rather than fearing God's anger for the times when we have misused his name, because Jesus became our brother and God's spirit is dwelling in us, we have a spirit of sonship. We can come to our Abba Father knowing we are forgiven, knowing we are loved, and knowing we will be heard. Amen. Let's pray. Abba, Father, God of peace, I turn aside from an unquiet world, seeking rest for my spirit and light for my thoughts. I bring my work to be sanctified, my wounds to be healed, my sins to be forgiven, my hopes to be renewed. In you there is perfect harmony. Draw me to yourself and silence the discords of my wasteful life. Your greatness is beyond my highest praise. Take me out of the loneliness of self and fill me with the fullness of your peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.